This is a guide on replacing an LCD on an Apple Unibody MacBook Pro 17 inch. The first step is to remove the aluminum bezel. The bezel is glued on around the perimeter and it is recommended to use a heat gun or a hair dryer to thoroughly warm it up before attempting to remove. Keep the heat gun at least an inch away and go around the perimeter making sure the edge is getting warmed up evenly. Insert a putty knife in the top left corner between the aluminum bezel and the rubber gasket as we are removing the bezel and leaving the rubber gasket in place. Gently slide the putty knife to the right, helping separation with your fingers. Skip the area near the eyesight camera. There is no glue there and we don't want to damage the wiring. Once the top edge is separated, move on to the side edges. Apply the heat as needed to achieve easy separation. Please note, it may take considerable amount of time to remove the bezel properly. Be extra patient and use the heat gun or the hair dryer instead of using force. Apply a bit of heat at the bottom edge. Separate the bezel. Hopefully it is nice and straight. Lay it down on a flat surface. The screen is mounted with four screws, two at the top and two more at the bottom. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to remove the two tiny screws at the bottom, so the entire top cover has to be separated from the body. Close the laptop and flip it over to gain access to the bottom panel. There are 10 screws holding the back cover in place. First three are long screws. The other seven are short. Remove the screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Separate the back cover. Make sure to be gentle when pulling up. In order to separate the display assembly, we will be disconnecting all the cables routed into it, as well as gaining access to the hinge screws. Go ahead and disconnect the flat ribbon cable on the motherboard side by pulling up on the connector part of the cable. Disconnect the eyesight camera cable by gently rocking the cable side to side once, then pulling it out. Carefully pull the eyesight cable out of its channel. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, unsnap three coaxial Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna cables. Slowly remove all three cables from their channels. Using a Phillips screwdriver, remove two screws on each side of the wireless card bracket. For convenience reasons, keep the screws together with a the bracket, then remove the bracket and set it aside. Remove a Phillips screw from the right cable guide. One of the coaxial cable uses it as a grounding point. Make sure to be careful when separating it. Set the cable guide and the screw aside. Move on to the left cable guide. Remove a Phillips screw and a cable bracket. For convenience, keep the screw and the bracket together. Remove the next Phillips screws. Be careful separating the screws as the video cable uses it as a tension point. A magnetic tip screwdriver is great for this repair. There is another screw left in the left cable guide, but in order to remove it, the video cable has to be disconnected. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, gently pop open the video connector bracket. Using both hands, slide the video connector out. Very important. Since the battery is still connected, the video cable has to be kept dead straight when disconnecting and reconnecting it. Slanting the connector may result in a short and a burnt fuse. Be extra precise when dealing with a video connector on the motherboard side. Remove the final Phillips screw from the left cable guide. Set the cable guide aside. At this point, the hinge screws can be accessed. The hinge screws use a Torx 6 size bit, and if your laptop is 2 years or older, there may be trouble when removing these screws. In our case, the screws, one on each side, had to be drilled out. 
since one got stripped almost immediately and the other broke our brand new screwdriver bit. When it comes to drilling the screws out, pick a bit size at least matching that of the screw stem or larger, and it's a good idea to place a strong magnet near the drill point, as the metal shavings are best to be collected and not let loose in the case. Drill down into the center of the screw until the cap is separated. In order to easily remove and later replace the display assembly, the hinge has to be open at 90 degree angle. Best way to achieve that is to hang the computer off the table with the display assembly open and coming down over the table. Go ahead and remove Torx screws on each side. Gently lift the display assembly, minding the cables on both sides. Set the computer body aside and place the display assembly on the table. The next step is to separate the hinge cover. Slide it to the left to unlock it from its tabs and gently lift up. Set the hinge cover aside. At this point, both hinges have to be removed. The hinges are mounted using three Torx screws, two on the bottom side and one on the opposite side of each hinge. Remove all four bottom hinge screws using a Torx screwdriver. Remove two opposing screws, one on each hinge. Set the left and the right hinge aside. Once the hinges are removed, roll back the rubber gasket directly underneath the left hinge and remove a tiny Phillips screw. Remove another tiny Phillips screw on the right side under the rubber gasket. Remove two top LCD screws, one on the left side and the other on the right. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, lift up the LCD panel and pull it out of the back cover. Ensure to guide the video cable together with a screen. Do not put too much strain on the video cable and be patient. Feed through enough cable to position the LCD perpendicular to the back cover. Lay the LCD down like so. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, open the video connector bracket and disconnect the video cable from the LCD. Set the old panel aside. At this point, the new panel can be installed. If the new screen does not come with a protective film, it is recommended to place a cloth or a paper towel underneath it when installing. Position the new panel in alignment with the video cable and reconnect the video jack. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, close the connector's bracket and tuck it in under the plastic shield on the LCD. Carefully set the new panel in place, minding the video cable and making sure the bottom mounting points are inserted in the slots. Replace two tiny mounting screws at the top. Then replace the two bottom screws under the rubber gasket. At this point, the hinges can be reinstalled. Align the top screw of the right hinge, then replace the hinge. All cabling goes on the upper side of it. Replace the bottom two screws. Repeat the same for the left hinge. Set the upper screw first. And secure the two bottom screws. Set the video cable in place above the hinge and replace the hinge cover. Align it half an inch offset to the right and slide it in place to the left, making sure it is centered and is fitted properly to all the locking tabs underneath. Place the laptop body on the edge of the table and align in position to reinstall the display assembly. Carefully position the display assembly over the mounting points 
Replace the hinge screws, but do not tighten them all the way. The top cover needs to be properly aligned with the body, so make sure the screws allow for some travel. Once both left and right hinge screws are in place, close the display assembly and make sure all corners and sides line up with the laptop's body. Then tighten the hinge screws. At this point, the cable guides can be reinstalled. Replace the right cable guide, it should be a fairly snug fit. Secure the right side screw. Make sure the coaxial cable grounding point is included under the screw. Replace the left cable guide. Secure the left Phillips screw. Replace the middle Phillips screw. Make sure the video cable tensioning point is included under that screw. Align the video cable with a socket and ensuring precise fit, slide the video jack into the connector. Using a pick or a flat screwdriver, secure the video connector bracket. Replace the wireless card bracket. Secure the right, then the left Phillips screws. Reconnect the coaxial antenna cables and secure them in the channels. Reposition the eye side cable into its channel and gently plug it in on the motherboard. Reconnect the flex ribbon connector to the motherboard. Don't forget the video cable clamp on the left hinge, it is secured with a Phillips screw. At this point, the back cover can be replaced. Press on the middle to snap in securing tabs with both hands. Replace the back cover screws. Three long ones starting from the bottom left corner, and the other seven short. At this point, the screen can be tested. Press the power button, and if the startup graphics appears, the screen is installed and working properly. Please note the printed spot on the screen, visible when the computer is turned on. It is printed on the protective film. Press and hold the power button to cancel the boot up. Peel off and remove the protective film starting at the top left corner. At this point, the bezel can be replaced. Place the bezel face down on the computer and gently bend it back in shape if needed. Warm up the underside of the bezel with a heat gun for a few seconds to reactivate the glue. Align the bezel at the bottom edge and snap it in gently around the perimeter. Make sure it fits well under the rubber gasket and that all the corners are in place. And you're done.